My name is Jim Delap. And Jim, what is your date of birth? July 20, 1930. I was born in Prairie Grove. And this interview is for the Prairie Grove Oral History Project, and we want to be sure that we have your permission to reuse the interview. You have my permission. Thank you, Jim. Uh, who were your parents? Clyde Delap and Irene Dodson Delap. Okay, and Jim, tell me about your brothers and sisters. I have none. I'm an only child. Okay. Uh, tell me about what business was your family in? What was what kind of work? My father was a rural mail carrier for forty years, and uh, my mother never worked except during the war when my father was in the service then she worked part-time at the five and ten cent store down in prairie grove <laughs> um where did you live growing up when you were young we lived on at 404 north mock street And what would you do to help out around the house? What were some of your chores at home? Very little. <laughs> My parents would say very little. Um, what was it like growing up in Prairie Grove as a little kid? What were some of the things you remember doing around the house and around town? I remember it was quite different. Population was about 900 at that time, I think, somewhere along in there. And uh, we had a telephone, but uh, the numbers were so small that everyone could remember your number. I know my parents' telephone number was 150. And uh, yeah, we um, it was a different time altogether. We uh, when I was in high school, <clears throat> about the only thing to do in the evenings was walk down to the main street and hang out with bunch of guys I knew, and uh, sometimes we got in trouble, <laughs> sometimes we didn't, <laughs> but uh, they, they had a, a night watchman, I think they called him back then, named Luther Jones. Uh, his son was a classmate of mine, but uh, Luther couldn't read or write, but he was the night watchman. And uh, sometimes if he decided somebody needed a ticket, they'd have to write the ticket themselves because he couldn't write. <laughs> I don't know, it, it was just a different time altogether. What else do you remember about hanging out downtown? Do you remember going into the mock clinic to warm up? Yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, the mock clinic was there on the main street. And <clears throat> one of the girls from my high school class I dated had an older brother who uh, brought her into town when he was dating another girl. And uh, she and I would go to the movie and uh, then we'd go over and sit in the lobby at the mock clinic and wait for him to come back by and pick her up. <laughs> but uh, the parks, family owned the, the uh, theater 
And I worked for them part time, doing first one thing and another. And uh, they had movies almost every night. And on the weekend, uh, Saturdays and Sundays, there were matinees and then the evening movies. But it was, it was the, about the only entertainment in Prairie Grove at that time. What do you remember about the old movie theater? I'm sorry? Tell me all about some of your memories of what it was like at the theater. I remember <clears throat> some of the older guys, a few years older than, my, than me, uh, used to really look forward to Halloween. They'd find an outhouse somewhere and set it up at an intersection. And uh, one time, I could name some names, but I won't. <laughs> they, they took apart a wagon that the Southern Mercantile had sitting out in the back alley. The wagon was for sale. They took this wagon apart, carried it up on top of the building, put it back together, and hung the tongue out over the main street. And <laughs> <laughs> it was it was quite a deal, but uh, it was really funny at the time. Um, what are some other memories you have? Early memories of downtown. Where were some of the places you would go to trade? Or well, there were two drugstores. Uh, Carmen's had a drugstore, and the Sterling was here then also still there. They have moved, I think, from the location where they were back then, but uh, they've been there a long time. And I remember that uh, uh, the Wolvertons, uh, Charlie Wolverton and his brother, can't remember his first name, and uh, Vincel Bell, uh, Clarence Davis, uh, they were all partners in that. And the Elizabeth Hospital had a subsidiary of the Sterling Drug right off their lobby. And uh, if you went up there to the doctor and he prescribed drugs for you, you could pick it up right there. And it was quite a deal. Um, any other stores you can remember going into? Well, the Southern Mercantile was always there. <clears throat> they um, you could go in there and spend a half a day browsing around and anything you wanted. I remember later on, uh, this would have been in the 60s or 70s. I came by a lantern that my grandparents had had, and of course the the wick was gone, the globe was gone, everything just about. I took that down to the southern, and Florence Hill, the owner, uh, said, "Sure, we've got parts for this," and she just put it back together. But uh, they they had almost anything you wanted, including harness for animals and what have you. Um, tell me about going to school in Prairie Grove. That was a different life. 
I started out <clears throat> in Prairie Grove. They had an elementary school uh, located south of where the high school was. Uh, and then the, the high school building, the junior high and high school was all in that one three-story building. And uh, sometime during my high school years, they consolidated some of the outlying school districts, Strickler and, and uh, Ray's Mill and some of them. And uh, some of the kids that came in from Ray's Mill turned out to be my best friends. It, uh, anyhow, it was... Uh, we had uh, athletics, of course, and uh, but we didn't. We we just had an old outdoor basketball court, and uh, during my junior and senior year in high school, we went up to Fayetteville to the uh, armory. National Guard Armory to play our games up there on that court. <laughs> so it was, we, we still had, at that time, we still had outdoor toilets. So, uh, you know, if you had to go to the toilet, well, you went off down there and, <laughs> And they had a lunch room where they served lunch. There were two or three women that worked in there and cooked the meals and served them to the kids. But, uh, um, what'd you do after you got out of school? Let's talk about that. I immediately enlisted in the U.S. Navy. This was in 1948. Uh, went through boot camp in San Diego, California. Spent almost five years in the Navy because I got caught up in the Korean War and uh, then came back here and married the preacher's daughter. <laughs> and we, uh, we lived the first 10 years or so over in Oklahoma. And I worked for the uh, mental health department over there at Vanita State Hospital and Enid State School. But we kept trying to get back here and finally did in 1966. Been here ever since. Raised our two children here. Uh, tell me about your wife and your children. Who were they? I'm sorry? The names of your wife and children? My, my wife's maiden name was Bidwell. Her father was Presbyterian church uh, pastor. Uh, her given name is Catherine. And uh, she went to school up the university and taught school in, in the Prairie Grove system for 30 years until she retired. But, uh, and like I told you before, I, I had no siblings at all, so. Once you moved back from Oklahoma and started living in Prairie Grove, what kind of work were you doing then? I was working for the university. I was, uh, I was in the accounting field and uh, <clears throat> I worked up there in the controller's office for 25 years 
and finally retired because I just couldn't stand it any longer. <laughs> what was it like commuting back in those days, driving back and forth? Was there, what was the traffic like and the roads like? Well, when I was going to school, uh, we had carpools, of course. Several of us would uh, go together in a car and drive up to the university and take classes there. And uh, it was uh, it was quite a deal. The um, we. Uh, well, I won't get into that. <laughs> um, tell me more about working there and traveling back and forth to work. That, okay. That's when you met, you would carpool driving to work? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did that for years while we were going to school and then afterward, when when I was working up at the university, uh, it was uh, there wasn't nearly the traffic that there is now. It was easy enough to drive up to the stadium parking lot and and walk wherever you wanted to go, but uh, and I don't even recognize the university anymore. I wouldn't know what was what up there. Uh, once you moved back uh, in Prairie Grove, what was the town like then? Well, it had grown some, but it was still just a hick town, as they call them. Uh, they built the new high school and some of the other buildings in the Prairie Grove system uh, where they are located now. And uh, my wife, who's several years younger than me, uh, she graduated from their new high school, first year they were there, which would have been I don't remember, but it was, I don't remember when they tore that old building down up there, but uh, it was, I think it had been condemned long before we vacated the thing. Uh, I can remember there was a central staircase that wound around to get to the top floor and you always wondered if it was going to fall down when you went up and down it. <laughs> it was it was really rickety what was school like back then what was school like I hesitate to say this, but it was a joke. Uh, the teachers were conscientious and they tried their best to teach us things and some of the students learned a lot, I'm sure. But myself and some of the guys that I hung around with, uh, we, we just did what little we could to get by and uh, make a passing grade and go on to the next, <laughs> the next level. When you were a kid in Prairie Grove, what would you all do for fun? Well, we, during the summer months, we had some activities that we participated in that we made up ourselves. And uh, I, I remember one thing, we had uh, rubber gun fights. You know what a rubber gun is? 
Tell me. Okay. Uh, you make up either a pistol or a rifle out of lumber, wood, shapes or like that, and you attach a clothespin to the back side of it and find an old inner tube, cut rings out of it, hook it over the front and bring it back to the clothespin and then when you got ready to shoot, all you had to do was push the clothespin and it <laughs> That was one of the things we did. We, we swam quite a lot during the summer out at the Illinois River and also the Muddy Fork. And uh, I don't know how we kept from getting snake bit and all that because we didn't pay any attention to the snakes and the critters out there on the creek. But uh, it was um, quite a lot of fun. What would the adults do back when you were a kid? What would the adults do for fun? Would be a what? What would the adults do for fun back when you were a kid? Oh gosh, I don't know. I didn't pay any attention to that. Well, once you moved back here in the 60s and married and were living here in Prairie Grove, what did you and your wife do for social activity or for fun? Well, we, we had two children by then, both of them in school elementary school and we took part in all the school activities of course like i say my wife was a teacher and uh, you ask about what the adults did back then for recreation i can remember that my parents and a lot of their friends uh, played cards quite a lot They'd get together at someone's house and have two tables of cards. This is still going on, by the way. My wife hosted a bridge party last week. But anyhow, uh, that, that was about it because you didn't want to go to the theater every night. When did y'all get a television at home? We didn't have a television until, I'm talking about my wife and I, we didn't have a television until uh, sometime in the 60s. And uh, the radio, got a lot of use back then. There were musical programs and uh, news programs, of course, and stuff like that. Uh, where did your family go to church if you did go? I'm sorry? Uh, where did your family go to church if you went? Oh, uh, <clears throat> My family went to the Methodist Church here in Prairie Grove. Uh, my mother's parents, the Dodsons, uh, were Methodist. And uh, so we ended up down at the Methodist Church with them. But the, uh, the Presbyterian Church was quite active at that time, too. And a lot of the old Prairie Grove standbys, the Parkses and the, the McCormicks, and a lot of those people belonged to the Presbyterian Church. And my wife grew up in the Presbyterian Church. What did you remember, your oldest memories of the Battlefield Park? What was it like back in the days? 
Well, there wasn't anything here. It was just grown up mostly. The only thing here was that old bandstand out there. And it got a lot of use from when, when if you had a car, you could come up here and pull around behind them and, uh, you know, try to make out or whatever. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, while, while we were gone, the, uh, the Lions Club uh, decided to uh, undertake a project of cleaning the place up. And uh, they started out just keeping the grass cut and first one thing and another like that. And uh, one thing led to another and they built picnic tables and uh, then they decided they'd bring in some of these old homes. Most of these buildings were uh, in the outlying areas. And they just tore those down and brought them in here and put them back together. Even including that chimney thing out there. It was out at Ray's Mill. And they took that down. I don't know if they numbered the stones or not, but they brought it back in here and put it, put it up. And then they started having the clothesline fair, which was an arts and crafts fair. And uh, it developed into quite a deal. But uh, the, uh, the Prairie Grove Lions Club should have credit for, for this state park because they were instrumental in getting everything done. And uh, lo and behold, after they got everything in good shape, the State Park Commission decided that they, <laughs> they needed to take it over. So they did and it's, it's a nice park. Um, what other memories about Prairie Grove do you have or things that you remember changing over the years? Just about everything. Tell me more. Well, there, there just wasn't hardly anything to do when I was growing up. Like I said, we hung out downtown and got into mischief and first one thing and another, but uh, it was just very different. That's all I can say. Jim, if someone asked you that someone who'd never been to Prairie Grove said, tell me about your hometown of Prairie Grove, what's it like there? What would you tell them? <laughs> I'd be at a loss to explain it. But uh, it's entirely different. The, uh, the downtown area has evolved into a, uh, arts and crafts thing and uh, there are a lot of uh, second-hand stores and first one thing and another, but uh, the, uh, the school system is, is really in good shape now, I guess. They, they've done a lot of work up there. But, um, it's hard to explain. 
Anything else you want to tell me about Prairie Grove? What would you tell me about the people of Prairie Grove? What are they like? Well, <clears throat> back when I was growing up, Almost everybody knew everybody else. And uh, if you got into some kind of trouble, you, you were in trouble because everybody in town knew it. Uh, but uh, it was, uh, it was a time when neighbors took care of neighbors and uh, try to look out for the welfare of the community and churches and what have you. Tell me, let's talk about the tradition of the old men sitting around and talking in town. They used to do it, I think, in the old days at the court, and then now you see a lot of people at One Stop or maybe at Crawley's and possibly other places. Uh, can you talk about that? Do you ever do that or tell well, me what you know? When I was a kid, uh, they had what they call a trades day every Saturday. Uh, people from all around came into town, a lot of them in uh, with a horse and wagon, did their shopping and so forth. Uh, and uh, maybe took in an afternoon matinee or something, but there was a lot of visiting, like you said. Uh, people just sat out there on the street and talked and visited and tried to catch up on all the gossip and what have you. What about now? What about the people that the one stop and the Crawley's crowd? What, do you ever go down there and listen to them or participate in that? No, I have a friend or two who who I get together with once a week for coffee down at Mel's Diner. But uh, the one stops are crowded that you can't hardly get in there. <laughs>